Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Grantley Adams International Airport. Um, with me is Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, and a number of government officials. And at this time, the Prime Minister and her officials will make a couple announcements that are of importance to the country. First, we will go, however, to the Deputy Chief Medical Officer. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words pertaining to COVID situation in Barbados. Um, so the current trajectory for COVID cases in Barbados is a downward trajectory. We are averaging approximately 361 cases a day. Our positivity rate is currently at around 25% compared to 32% just about two weeks ago. In terms of the reproductive number, this is an indicator of, of the multiplicity of the, the, and the growth of the virus in Barbados. What we want is a reproductive number less than one, and currently that reproductive number is 0 0.85. The doubling time has also increased, so all indicators are, are corroborating the hypothesis that the, and the observation rather, that the numbers of COVID cases in Barbados is going down, and this is the trajectory that's expected over the coming weeks. This current outbreak started around the end of March of this year. Um, we would have recently done some genomic sampling and recognized that the outbreak is predominated by the BA2 subvariant. So in the Omicron variant of COVID, we've had BA1, and right now it seems as though this is being solely driven by BA2. We continue to be very optimistic about the course of the epidemic. The hospitalizations has stabilized as well and is in fact coming down. And even though unfortunately we're still getting a few deaths due to COVID, the overall proportion of people dying or the case fatality rate of COVID is very low in Barbados at 0.3%. So one of the lowest in the world. Thank you very much, Dr. Bess. Um, I really want to say good afternoon to all Barbadians. Thank you, Minister Cummins, Chairman of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Link. This is Williams. Um, Mark, I uh, didn't get your name, Frederick. sir. Frederick? Yeah. Got it there. Um, and members of the media. First of all, let me thank you for coming. I came into the country yesterday afternoon, and it was clear to me that I wanted to do a visit again today at the airport for a number of things. And also, after meeting with the Ministry of Health officials, decisions were made as it relates to our protocols going forward. I think that you will appreciate that we have always said that we will have a gas and break approach. And given the declines that we're seeing, we feel comfortable to make a few changes again. I've therefore been advised by the Ministry of Health that all persons who are vaccinated um, who are coming into Barbados will no longer need to come in with any kind of test results. So we're removing testing for vaccinated passengers coming into Barbados. Mm -hmm. Unvaccinated passengers will still have to test and the Ministry of Health later this week will explain the further protocols for unvaccinated persons. With respect to mask wearing, it is clear that we will make a change for mask wearing for outdoors outdoor mask wearing will become optional, but indoors and on public transport, masks will still be required and there will be no changes at all to what happens in the school system. So schools will remain as they were today and the others will um, on the ne next directive. We hope that all of these changes will start from Wednesday, May 25th with respect to both the vaccinated passengers not needing tests to come in the Ministry of Tourism and the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. will deal with the marketplace to ensure that that message goes out seamlessly. With respect to the mask wearing, the Ministry of Health and the Attorney General's Office will ensure that the directive is put in place for the absolute avoidance of doubt. Let me repeat, outdoors, other than schools, optional. Public transport and indoors, it remains as it is now required, but if you're eating, if you're drinking, if you're talking, obviously you know you remove your mask indoors to be able to facilitate those things. Um, we want, as you heard, for people still to be vigilant, 
take your boosters. And those of you who have a vaccinated, vaccinate. We've been lucky that over 70% of the eligible population have vaccinated. We still have not gotten the vaccines for the 5 to 11s. We want and are still trying to do it. We're in deep discussions with two countries at the moment in the hope that we can get there. But we feel comfortable, as I said earlier this week, when I spoke to, I think it was Brass Tax, cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. And those are the two words that are guiding us all the time, mm -hmm. cautiously mm -hmm. optimistic. I will say that, especially with relation to the mask or anything else, if another variant presents itself that causes us concern, believe you me, you don't have to ask what the government can do or what I can do because we will press brakes again. Mm -hmm. But at this point in time, everything is moving in the right direction and allows us, therefore, to be cautiously optimistic and to take the necessary changes, make the necessary changes that we need to make. I also took the opportunity to look at the airport and the processing. We had some issues a couple of weeks ago um, with respect to the length of time, especially in that 1.30 to 3.30 um, time frame with, with people being able to get access to their baggage and to be able to move out. We're conscious and we're conscious of it. Um, the minister has now informed me that seven of the eight belts are now working. We had been down to what, two or three at one point. Mm -hmm. And of course, in this supply chain disruption, parts are like headaches. So I'm not fooling anybody. But it therefore means that if something is wrong, then the rest of us got to pick up the slack. And therefore, um, we can't change the times that all these planes would come in. In an ideal world, I spread them all out. But the slots are what they are. And these ladies will tell you how difficult it is to get those slots moved. So what does it mean? The rest of us, that we've got to make up for it. We've got to move them through immigration as fast as we can. We've done that. We have 57 machines now that people are using. And those, therefore, have helped in moving the people through immigration quickly. The issue with bags and customs, I just explained to you what was one of the issues. And of course, as you know, we had to put in additional scanning equipment because when we inherited, there was nothing there. Um, and the third part now, obviously, would be the public health concerns. If we are no longer requiring the tests, then it means that that doesn't slow down the process mm -hmm. for people presenting test results. And therefore, people should be able to move through the airport much, much quicker. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say, and, and we've tried, we've hired hostesses since coming to government. Every person on this premise called Grantley Adams Airport must see themselves as the chief host or the chief hostess of this country. If any of us invite anybody home at us, Chris, to invite, you, invite people home at you, what are you going to do? Make sure that from the time they step from the front step, not even inside the house, that they are comfortable and that they are welcomed. And the beauty of this country is that we have the highest repeat rate of any country in the Caribbean, not now, but for decades. And why? Because at the end of the day, they tell you, Bajans are hospitable Bajans. They may not be flashy, but when they tell you something, no, they mean it. And they're there for you. And, and, and Covid, you're not in, so you like, you know what I mean. <laughs> you understand? So trust me, and that's what we need to just reinforce. All of us are in this together. We had a 90% decline in the number of visitors. It has hurt us all. There is nobody in Barbados who cannot claim not to have been hurt in the last two years from the decline in tourism. We are significantly on our way back up. But I want us to start to sprint now. We were creeping, we were walking. I've told these ladies and the rest of the tourism establishment, I want us to start sprinting now. But they can only sprint if they have the comfort that all of the rest of us in the mark moving together and trying to be able to get us moving so that we can have more people working again Unemployment is down to 10.9%. Before the pandemic, it was 10.1%. I want it below 10. Mm -hmm. Cost of living issues are affecting people, so they need to do what? To work. Mm -hmm. And they need to work, especially in areas where there can be competitiveness. And people, who, because of the quality of service, may want to yeah. tip more and to give more. Not true? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the issue of the earning of foreign exchange, which the country needs. Brings me on to the last issue of cost of living. I said a few things on Wednesday before going to Ghana. I went to Ghana. Um, I was in Ghana and came back yesterday, um, this afternoon. And the conference was exceptionally successful. And, and you'll probably pick up the regional strings 
from what I said down there, both yesterday and day before. We have a very difficult time in this world. And the world is at a point where, I'm not sure what's happening there. The world is at a point where we have people complaining because the cost of goods was first affected by the shipping routes being disrupted mm -hmm. in the pandemic. Exactly. And we knew it. Mm -hmm. We had meetings since October, November That's last right. year. We mm -hmm. met with the private Thank sector. Mm -hmm. And that is why in the budget, you heard me freeze the rates for shipping, the CIF rates for 2019 December, in order to be able to pay taxes on that base rather than paying taxes on the elevated freight rates. But that was as good as March because that had nothing at all to do then Ukraine. with the war mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. and that had nothing at all to do with the zero tolerance policy in China that has led to thousands of ships being outside of Shanghai, right. not being able to move goods mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and not being able to move goods out. Mm -hmm. So when you combine these factors, then you begin to look and realize, particularly since Russia is and Ukraine are responsible for such a high percentage of the world's grain, wheat in particular, and also fertilizer. It therefore means that we can continue to face these problems for some time. And because we are small, we don't get the right to have our voices heard immediately, which is why you see me moving in and out and going to all these meetings and shouting loud, because people must know that there's a country called Barbados and there's a region called the Caribbean and that small island developing states that didn't contribute to the climate crisis are the ones on the front line taking the first lashes. And people must learn as well that we also have tried hard to be able to ensure that we can keep this region as a zone of peace, but all of these things now are affecting how we eat mm -hmm. and what we can afford to eat and what we can afford to bring in in terms of parts and mm -hmm. the utility companies. I met with Light and Power this week. Light and Power indicated that they're having difficulties with respect to being able to source transformers and source other types of um, battery equipment and things that they need. So this is a global issue. And therefore, I'm very happy that President Ali was able to put together in short order a magnificent program that allows us to see how we can better coordinate and cooperate with each other. I have been given the responsibility of dealing with the finances week after next again in the region and the private sector to see how we can work together to be able to bring these costs down and to be able to ensure that we can trade what we are growing in a much easier way. We saw pineapples down there for a dollar US. We saw uh, those and other vegetables with 30 and 40 cents US. We also have stuff that we can grow here. I keep making the point. I went in St. Lucie two weeks ago and saw the most beautiful red onions and onions growing. But yet, we are buying onions more often than not in supermarkets that are 12 month old onions that are from somebody else's country. So we gotta get this right, and it is a process, but we are satisfied that we are on the way to doing so. Next Friday is AgriFest, and President Ali's coming to open it up, and to also ensure that we bring persons who can have technology to see how Bajans can better protect themselves, both against predial larceny, and also ensure that they can use more efficient means for planting and also for spraying and doing the other things that they need to do. Um, I'm going to ask my ministers to start a process of meeting again. I announced, as you know, in the budget, the need for continuous monitoring. But I'm satisfied that we need now to re-engage and to keep going to see what else can be done so that the Minister of Agriculture, when he returns, will be meeting with farmers. I think I'm meeting with him and the poultry people at some point too. Um, and the pig farmers, but he's going to meet with the other small farmers and the other bigger farmers on food production. Uh, Minister Ishmael will be required to meet with the manufacturers who are involved in agro-processing of food manufacturing. And Minister Simmons will continue with Minister of Husbands to meet with the retailers and distributors and supermarkets. Because as I said, I'm conscious that some are coming out soon. <laughs> and, 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 and while we've taken some of the pressure for people with the school meals now with children, 
that will not be the case easily in summer. So we have to look and see how best we can work together to be able to ease the pressure off of Bajans. We know you're feeling it. We are going to do our best. But by the same token, there's only so much as you can do. You will pick up the TV and you're watching Sky, you see Boris Johnson and them dealing with double digit increases in England. You pick up the TV and you're watching yeah. President um, Biden, you see them dealing with the same issues. So that we know it is global. But there are little things that we can do and there may be some other things that the government <coughs> can do. And I want to double down again. <coughs> we did it before March for the budget. I want to do it again and have that level of consultation to see in the next two or three weeks what we can settle on and how we can make it even a little easier. We may not do the kill cow that people want, but any pressure, you ever wear a shoe that b bite in you? <laughs> any little pressure is take the pressure off of you, not true? And that's what we want to do. Okay. Mark, I don't know if you or Cedric want to say anything with respect to the airport and, and, and thing because you are in a face and a sense of it, you are part of the face of who Barbadians meet and visitors meet coming in. And I think we've been able to try and improve on the on time, but there's still room for further improvement. Yeah, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, most of all the problems were like um, people waiting a long time for the luggage due to the fact that the scanners weren't working and stuff. But as we explained earlier, I guess that if belts. you get yeah, the conveyor belts and stuff, if you get like seven or eight working, things should be hard and people get a good flow. Mm. And then you would have noticed when we came up here this evening as well, by 3.30, most of the pressure had been off from the 1.30, um, 2 o'clock prep jam. And just now, as you can see, JetBlue and British Airways is on the ground, but the traffic moving, traffic yeah. moving. Yeah, it's like a 1.30 to 3.30 thing. Yeah. That's at least 4 o'clock, everybody going back. The complaints is mostly between that yeah. time and the long stay back. And, and in order for this to work, it's like your body. The human body is made up of many different parts. The airport is made up of many different mm -hmm. parts. Yeah, okay. Every single one who works up here is critical to the system working fluently and efficiently. And that's all we're trying to do. Any questions before we wrap up? The major announcements obviously mm -hmm. are the changes to protocols and to say to Bajans that look, let us get, we're gonna get on top of this thing with the cost of living. But you know, I've already told you too that it's not just government, it's everybody got to do their own little thing. How can I shift and move wrong and balance to be able to carry this burden? How can I cope a little easier? Um, how can I carpool? How can I conserve water, conserve electricity? And how can I do the little things that I can do in my backyard with my neighbors to make life and to cut down some of the expenditure that we would otherwise have to face? Madam Prime Minister, there's mm -hmm. some difficulties or, uh, with the sourcing or re getting us the AstraZeneca vaccine now that the, there's a fourth dose coming. Well, what is the story to that? The, the, I don't know what the stocks are for the respective ones. Suffice it to say that we have vaccines on the ground. Um, we will continue to begin procuring more um, and that's not a static situation. The one that I do know that is a difficulty, as I said, is the Pfizer for the five to 11 year olds. That has hurt my heart more than I can tell you and we're continuing to try and get it because the companies are just basically very, very complex in what they will do and who they will deal with. Um, that is why, believe you me, we've been working quietly because we feel that ultimately Barbados must develop vaccine manufacturing capacity. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that if there's one thing that I will work the next few years in this administration for is to leave you all with an appropriate vaccine manufacturing capacity. Because what this country and this region went through in the last two years is nothing short of vaccine apartheid. And apartheid in any form is wrong. Mm -hmm. And there are too many vaccines globally still being dumped, mm -hmm. regrettably, without people who need vaccines and boosters being able to get them. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Prime Minister, two questions from you, one for the Minister of Tourism and one for yourself. Um, to you, uh, with regards to uh, clarity, um, we, we do understand the logistics from the economic perspective with regards to lowering of these protocols. Uh, what does this science tell us? I mean, because we have been here before where, you know, we are seeing a look at it, it's trending downwards and then, you know, it's, it's back up again. Why is there gas and brakes? And the car is moving, um, the road empty, the press is Yes, yeah. not true. Trevor Thorpe is a car man. Mm -hmm. And when the traffic <laughs> come where you do, you press the brakes. We went through Alpha. We went through Delta. 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 We went through Omicron. We've gone through BA2 subvariant. Mm -hmm. 
I can tell you that you're not going to get another one, and this is one of the consequences of the climate crisis. That's our view, that the climate crisis has meant that the whole um, biodiversity of the world is changing, and what is happening in terms of diseases moving from animals to human beings, or because of the different temperatures, look at the sargassum seaweed, we're living in a different world. Sometimes they feel like watching Star Trek, you know. It really feels so. But we're living in a different world, and even in the other thing that I chair with the antimicrobial resistance, the last antibiotics to be put on the market was the year 2000. But what they found is that the effectiveness of them is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Not true, Anton, I'm not the doctor, but this is what the, the, the people working, the scientists working with me at WHO are telling us. And regrettably, because drug companies make money from you buying their medication over and over and over, they're making the medication for diabetes and mm -hmm. stroke and all them things that are over and over. But for the antibiotics, which is a one-course thing, the antimicrobials, they're not spending any money researching it. But yet, it is responsible. It is the third largest reason for people dying today and will be the largest one probably in another 20, 25 years. Yeah. And the question towards you, to the Minister of Tourism. Um, with regards to the lowering of, lowering of these protocols, this is something that the, the hotel <coughs> sector has been calling for. Do you see this having a, a major impact um, on our summer outlook, summer tourism outlook? I think so. I think uh, we're clear that many of the countries in the world are dealing with the same pandemic that we are, and each of our countries around the region, they too are guided by their public health officials, as we are here in Barbados. We have to make a decision guided by our scientists in the public health system on when it is appropriate for Barbados to make those changes. And at this point, the decision has been made that it is appropriate for Barbados, based on where we are, to make those changes. What that signals to our travelers is that it is safe for them to come to Barbados. We are in a position where we can comfortably accommodate many of the same measures that they are experiencing in their countries where they wear masks outdoors, uh, indoors predominantly, but outdoors it's not there, or testing is not uh, a requirement for certain types of activities. But we're always guided by what the Ministry of Health and the public health officials have said is safe for Barbados. And I think that is what has been brand Barbados in our markets. We have always been a safe destination, never gimmicky, never doing it just because everyone else is doing or because we think it's going to make money for us. It's always been timed very carefully. And so this is going to be beneficial to us, I believe, in the summer. Mm. <laughs> Madam Minister. Yes. Um, if, if we may, and Shelley, I don't know if you want to speak to it. Um, these are the list that you sent me for the countries that are not thing. Yes. And, and, and just show that Barbados is not trying to break new ground. If anything, we're coming out a little late because of that cautious optimism and that sure-footedness that is part of the Barbadian DNA. We don't always be the one out there just blazing for blazing sake. We want to make sure that what we're doing can be sustained because our people matter. Yeah. And, and that is why you will see that others have blazed, gone out of the gates. Gone out of the gates. Yeah. So yeah. Aruba opened the vaccinated and unvaccinated travelers no longer need to present no, any negative COVID tests or proof of vaccination. Bonaire opened the vaccinated and unvaccinated. No COVID tests are required. Um, same, Cuba opened the vaccinated and unvaccinated travelers, proof of vaccination and pre-entry COVID tests no longer required. Curacao, same thing. Dominica, vaccinated travelers, no pre-arrival form or pre-testing required, and only for the unvaccinated traveler will they require a test coming in. Dominican Republic opened the vaccinated and unvaccinated travelers, no vaccination proof or negative tests required. Same with Grenada. Jamaica, same thing, no travel authorization or pre-entry COVID tests needed. Saba and St. Eustatius, um, all travel requirements for entry eliminated. St. Lucia, no pre-entry COVID tests or online pre-registration needed. St. Bart's, you want me to keep on going, St. Martin? <laughs> huh? You go on and go on. So that it's not all, but there are good set out there already. And, and let's be clear, if you are family traveling, a mother, a father, and two or three children. Mm -hmm. Three children. Each test is what? 150 About US? 150 US That's 750 mm -hmm. US more just to come to Barbados. Okay? Mm -hmm. But we didn't want to do it while before the Ministry of Health Correct. was in a position to say it can be done safely. They're now in that position to say so. 
and that is why we're doing it. It means that we probably are a little behind the others, but our product is so good that mm -hmm. we can jump over everybody very shortly. Absolutely. That's right. Ma 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 <laughs> Madam Minister, mm -hmm. at a time then we are getting ready to look at tourism again, you are losing your CEO at the end of next month. Would this, how will this impact on, the, on your ability to keep? You mean the BHTA is losing the BHTA, their CEO? BHTA, yes. I have every confidence that the BHTA, which represents the majority of tourism players in the accommodation and in the direct tourism sector, will continue to make sure that through their board of directors and the current leadership of the BHTA, that they will have a seamless transition. And I want to take the opportunity to congratulate a former senator, colleague, as well. I will, say, I will now do so. <laughs> no, All right. Well, uh, well, the BHTA announced during the course of this week that their CEO is stepping down, for those who have not seen the news announcement as well. And we want to wish him all the very best. We want to thank him for the support that he has given to the Ministry of Tourism and the tourism you. sector. He has been a fantastic leader and we have had an excellent relationship with him and we are confident that he who will also pay, as has been indicated in the news story, I think carried in the, in the Nation news earlier this week, that he has, that he, <laughs> that he is going to play a role in selecting his success and we are confident that whoever succeeds him will also be instrumental and be a great partner for the tourism sector. Where's he going, Madam Prime Minister? If I may, and, and I do things appropriately. Um, I have asked um, Mr. Grant whether he will serve as our Consul General at Miami. He has agreed and he gave the appropriate notice to his employers. He agreed some time ago and he will now take up the post at a date that he and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, have agreed upon. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we're good, Mark. You all good? Anything else you want to say? Cedric, anything you want to say? You all good? You all said what it had to say. Really came in between 1 and 3 o'clock. Yeah, that, that's a pressure. Glad, but the key, is, yeah, the key is, the key is, the message I want for everybody, all business, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we've started a little later than the rest, but we are confident that what we offer here is the real deal. That's right. And a brand is as only as good as it is real. Um, our difficulty was to make sure that when we do it, we're balancing the health yes. and welfare of Barbadians mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, this is the rock that we have. Okay? Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I'm told that the people want to hear it again. All of these dates will become effective May 25th, which is Wednesday, um, and with respect to the optional mask wearing for outside mm -hmm. and with respect to the removal of the entry test for vaccinated passengers. Um, if there's any further movement on the unvaccinated, the Ministry of Health will advise before then. And with respect to schools, as I said, that remains as is. With respect to indoors and public transport, that also remains as is. But we know that people are allowed to remove, not for public transport, mm -hmm. but for inside, people will remove for talking, for drinking and for eating. Mm -hmm. And that really is to, help keep the pressure down. You don't ever reach 100%, but what you do is make sure that the majority of people are moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, Madam Take care. Thank you. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.